So you see this slide here, and uh, it's obviously got the two uh, uh, fuel tank gauges. So which of these two gauges would you rather uh, be able to, that you would want to look at when you get in the car and, and you get ready to drive? Which, which, uh, which of these two gauges would you like? The one that shows empty, the one that shows full? Full. Yeah, of course. You know, I, I, I have to admit that I'm one of these that uh, quite often goes out and, and gets in my wife's car and it's always on empty and then I have to go fill it. But anyway, uh, so why, why would we rather drive a car that has a full tank? So it can, it can go take somewhere. us where we want to go. That's right. Yeah, it takes us where we want to go. And uh, I, I, think, uh, I think all of us want that. You know, in an empty tank, you can't really do too much, can't really go too far, right? And then on a full tank, you can go a long way. You know, uh, and I think this is, uh, as we talk about this principle of filling the emotional tank, we got to realize that all of us have an, an emotional tank. And it works like this in this gas tank in the car. You know, it's either, you know, it's going to be somewhere, you know, and, and hopefully, um, you know, we try to do our job as coaches to help our athletes have a full tank. Now, uh, how many of you how many of you saw the Super Bowl this weekend? Okay, everybody. All right, that's great. Now, how many of you saw Cam Newton's interview at the after the Super Bowl was over? Okay. I saw a piece of it. So yeah. Some of you saw it. Uh, now, would you say that Cam Newton had a full tank at the end of the game or an empty tank? Empty. <laughs> I tell you, you know, I was watching that. And I saw Cam Newton, and he was up there, and he just looked—he just looked so depressed, and he just, you know, he just didn't have much to say. Uh, what, matter of fact, some one of some one of the reporters asked him, said, "Well, what did your coach said? You know, what did the coach say to you guys in the locker room?" He, he's kind of like, "I don't know, I don't remember," <laughs> you know. And I, so I was thinking to myself, "Boy, here is a guy, even at the professional level, who is running on an empty tank." And then, of course, you know, you, you go to the other side and you see all the Bronco players and you see that their, their tanks are really full. So when you have an empty tank, what other behaviors do you think uh, your athletes would, uh, would demonstrate when they're, when they're all running on empty? I'd say they're not motivated. Yeah, not motivated. Negative? Negative outlook? Yeah. Negative pessimistic, you know, they're just not, they're just not really fired up like, like we would want them to be. Okay. Anything else? I think Depressed. they pick on each other. I know my players pick on each other. Yeah. They pick on each other. Um, I think, I think even just by watching the, the football game this weekend, you saw right there at the end that the, the, uh, the Panthers just really sort of gave up, you know, um, Especially right there at the end, and the fumble and everything, and yeah, and then and then you have the whole interview thing, and you say, "Wow, you know these guys probably are not very coachable right now." So, what about the guys, uh, your team, when they are when their tank, their emotional tank is full? How, how do you think? What do you think the behaviors look like there? They're fired up, as you said. They're they're full of energy and they're ready to go. Right. Right. Enthusiastic. Go ahead, Ruben. Enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. Eager. Yeah, yeah. Probably more coachable, don't you figure? You know, and 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 they they probably have a really uh, a really good view of of the activity or the game or the the competition that they may be in, uh, and they're probably better able to deal with uh, all the tough things that come their way. So now, what do you think? Uh, as we look at these tanks, what do you think, uh, what drains the tank? What do you think drains the tank? Well, for Cam Newton, it was losing the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and which, I think, which I think most of us, if we were in that situation, we'd have a drained tank. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. What else, what else do you think drains it? I think a lot of criticism from a from a coach, maybe when a player is trying to learn something and the coach is constantly on them. Right, right, yeah. 
Um, how about how about sarcasm? You know, a lot of times we want to communicate using sarcasm because maybe we don't want to say something really awful, but we we tend to say things that uh, you know are sar sarcastic, or or, uh, or maybe we even just ignore our players. You know, they uh, how many times I, I I hate to admit it, but you know I think there's probably been a few times as a basketball coach uh, I've had a player do something really uh, just really stupid, and uh, maybe I pull them out of the game, and they come over, and I just don't even say anything, and they go sit out on the bench, and um, I probably missed missed a real opportunity to uh, put something back in the tank, but you know that happens sometimes. Uh, so yeah, you know, um, there's all kinds of things, uh, criticism. Uh, we overcorrect. We we're sarcastic. We ignore them. H how about nonverbal um, behaviors? Can you think of anything? That you might have done that you didn't express words; it was just nonverbal. Yeah, F facial expressions, flailing with the arms, turning your back, looks of disgust. Mm -hmm. just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, you know, actually, I was watching the UConn basketball game last night, and um, their head coach. Uh, he's very. He's got very. Uh, you, I should say. Uh, uh, his facial expressions uh, say a lot, you know, <laughs> oftentimes. And uh, I, maybe he doesn't mean it. I, I, you know, I don't know him that well personally, but just watching on TV, uh, you know, somebody does something uh, incorrectly, he's he's got a facial expression for it. So, what about filling the tank? What kind of um, what kind of behaviors do you think uh, would help us fill the tank for our athletes? I think just just showing them that you're just proud of them. No matter what they, you know, no matter what the outcome is of the score or the shot or the race, that you know you're proud of the effort they put in. Right, right. Well, the example you gave us, what filled the tank for the Broncos was that they won. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And 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 you know, even it was, even though it was the end of the game, don't you think those emotional tanks were just running, just totally full? You know, when the game is over and the confetti comes down and the music and you know, people, you know, running out on the field and the players all hugging each other, you know, and, and then they go up and get that trophy. Boy, that's that's a real emotional tank filler, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, we'll see if that translates over to next year, you know, but I'm, I'm sure it does. I'm sure that will have some residual effects. But I, I think for coaches, uh, some specific things that we want to do is, is be truthful with our players. We want to praise them when it's appropriate. Uh, we want to listen to them. Uh, we want to you know, really just express how much we appreciate the good things that they're doing. And then nonverbal things. What, what are some good nonverbal things that we might do to help fill that tank? I think just high fives and fist pumps and just, just your face having a positive look on it, smiling and nodding your head, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, clapping, uh, you know, yeah, the fist bumps, the, you know, letting them know, you know, and maybe maybe you have some other, uh, all of us develop some kind of nonverbal skills to express to our players, you know, when we're when we're proud of them and we appreciate that. So, well, you know, of all that, when we start thinking about draining the tank and filling the tank, you know, there's been some research out there that says that there's this this magic ratio of filling and, or, or having positive behavior towards our, our player versus the criticisms or, in, you know, or emptying the tank. So who could guess what do you think is the proper balance or the proper magic ratio of positive comments and positive behavior to negative or critical behavior? I'm going to say two to one. Two to one, okay. Anybody else? Two to one. Okay. Yeah, two to I like two to one. Twice, twice as much positive. Not as twice as much. Well, yes. you know, um, yeah. research says that the magic ratio really is uh, five to one. You know, for every five positive things that we say, you know, the, or or nonverbal things that we do, uh, to every critical thing that we say, that's what really helps us. Uh, fill up the emotional tank of our players. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, one of my favorite coaches of all time is John Wooden, and he he was uh, one of those coaches that really 
used that kind of magic ratio to encourage his players and give feedback to his players. And so, uh, so yeah, we want to we want to keep that magic ratio in mind as we coach, as we talk to our players, and try to be positive at least five times to every single time that we need to be critical or, or to say something that is uh, less than positive. So that's our emotional tank. We want to fill it. We want to make sure our, our kids are full because when we help them have a full emotional tank, not only are they better athletes, but they're better people. Boom. Ooh, right on time. Right at the buzzer. Good job. <laughs> No, you fit a lot right. in in 10 minutes. Thank you. 10 minutes goes fast. It does go right. very fast. Wait till you see how fast 90 minutes goes. <laughs> uh, Ruben, I know you have to get off soon. Do you want to, uh, would you like to comment? Yeah, let, let, me, let me just make two comments and then I'll, I'll, I'll leave the call and let you guys debrief in more detail. Sure. Um, uh, positives, uh, uh, I, I like the fact that you, you uh, brought in a couple of current events and and uh, work them in Super Bowl Ariama, Ariama Gino Ariama. Yeah, Gino um, Ariama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so I like I, I I like you capitalizing on what's happening currently and and working it in. Um, and then uh, my, my my suggestion is, you, you did it in ten minutes. I say go faster. I especially the first two slides. Those first two slides, you know, you just you just want to. They're they're supposed to be quick. They're just a quick introduction to the concept of a full tank, empty tank. And they're, they're, I like the fact that you ask questions, you know. But but ask the question um, uh, uh, sharply, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, get get your response from us and and move. You you want to get you want to get to the um, things that drain and fill tanks quickly, and and that's you know that's where you want to spend your time. Okay. First two slides fast. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Okay, First I got to go. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Thanks mm -hmm. Ruben. See you later. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I, I just put down a couple notes, Jack. I thought I thought you were very comfortable. And I and that, for me, is right off the bat. You know, I, I sit there and think when I watch people do this, what I want to listen to you for 90 minutes. And I think your tone is very comfortable and very conversational much more so than, you know, a lecture. And I think right there, tone off the bat is number one for me. So I find your tone very, very pleasing to hear. Um, and again, I also write down, I like that you brought in examples right from the Super Bowl, right off the bat. Um, I think real, this is just a little warning. Um, and this is something that I learned. Be aware that when you, I call it name dropping, when you name drop about, you know, Cam Newton or John Wooden or any of these people, a lot of people in your audience do not know who they are. So sometimes it makes people feel like, I don't know who he's talking about. Just a quick, you know, Cam Newton played for the Panthers or John Wooden, coach of UCLA. You know, just put in a little detail because assume that not everybody in your audience knows who you're talking about. And sometimes okay. it can be a great story that's confusing for the audience if they don't know what sport or what, who you're talking about. So just a little detail for that. Um, okay. I think, you know, concentrating on behaviors is really important because you made that real. What behaviors does a player show when they have an empty tank? What players does a, what, what behaviors does a player show when they have a full tank? Again, I agree with Ruben that you spend a little bit longer on that than um, you might need to because, you know, the idea of tank filling and draining, just the visual of seeing the tanks makes it really clear to people. Okay, we know what we're talking about. I like to get into what do coaches do to fill? What can coaches do to drain? Because that's where the lesson really hits rather mm. than the, a lot of, a lot of times our principles are very explanation driven where we want them to be more solution focused. Okay, what can we do to solve this? How can we fix this? So if you're gonna you know, put a ratio of your timing, I would definitely say spend more time on the solution, sort of what, what Ruben ex, um, right. explained too, which I thought was great. Um, again, I thought your question style was awesome. Um, you just, you know, everything was a question and bringing it out from the audience. Just maybe throw in there something to get them talking to each other or talking in a group or make it real. You know, turn to a partner and talk about a player that you know that had a, has a very drained tank. Tell me what that, you know, I like to actually use names sometimes of kids. You know, turn to, turn to your partner, Jack, here and tell him about a kid that you've had that had a really empty tank and what did he look like? And then I could turn to you, Jack, and say, you know what, I had this kid named Timmy and he just, ugh, he was so, you know, and then tell me, describe that player for me. 
So it makes mm -hmm. it a lot less general. Sometimes that helps the audience. Um, the only how, other important, thing, how important is the refer? I mean, I, I, I had it in my mind that I was going to refer to, you know, page 31, 32 mm -hmm. in the book. I mean, we talked about that the other day, you know, that, I mean, they have these books, we might as well refer to it and have them go there. Sure. I, I, I just kind of blew past that and, and didn't do it. But it, yeah, you, I mean, is there, you know, when we think about that, because I, you know, when I ask them questions about filling and draining the tank, I don't want to point them to the book right away because then they, they open it up like to page 31 and 32 and they right. go, then they're giving me answers right out of the book, which yeah. is, you know, I want it to come from them before they have a chance to see what's here. Right, exactly. So I think, I don't think you need to do it in the beginning, but I think it's great to point out. Um, and I've used the book before after you kind of explained what drains and what fills and gotten some answers out of the audience. Okay, do you ever realize that what comes out of your mouth is either tank filling or tank draining? Just by mm -hmm. what you say, let's look at page 31. Let's look at some of the quotes that we've heard coaches say. Mm -hmm. Is it tank draining or is it tank filling? So turn to, you know, you might have half the group, and I've done this before. Get with a partner. One of you turn on page 31, one of you turn on page 32. <laughs> and I want you to read back and forth the first one on page 31. If we're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, you read the first one. The first person reads, nice effort. You hustled and fought for all four quarters. The next person would read, you should have gotten more loose balls. Be a group more aggressive, you know. Just, you know, have them kind of read back and forth like that. Or even in the big group, say, can I have a volunteer to read the first quote on page 31? Another volunteer read the first quote on page 32. Yeah. So it just gives them the, the, it makes the coaches realize that what they're saying has a lot of power. And, right. and I, I like to use, especially like, you know, be more aggressive. Like right there, we think as coaches, we're motivating. But what you're really doing, if you say be more aggressive, it means that Jack's not being aggressive out there. And you're now comparing Jack to all the other players and saying, you're not doing a good job, you know, rather than saying, I like your hustle. Let's keep it up. Mm -hmm. Kind mm -hmm. of different. Um, okay. So I just think, I think the examples on page 31 and 32 are really good. Um, you know, it, it gives you all the examples, but I think I agree with you. I don't think you should do it right up front, but right. you know, see how your audience is, yeah, see how your time is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other uh, thing, audience, that makes it nice. Yeah. The only other thing that I put down as a suggestion, um, when you're talking about the magic ratio, you did a nice job of explaining. You just got to kind of little, a lot of the things that we do as trainers, especially in the beginning is just getting the words right. Just getting the verbiage out to make it, you know, we know what it means. We know how to under, we know exactly what it means. But when you go to convey it to an audience, it's like magic ratio. Yeah. It means five or five good to one. You know, you're kind of like, ah, what does this mean? <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, I noticed you flubbing up a little bit, but we got the point. I just keep it simple that the magic ratio is what we strive for. It, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, essentially, it's going to be sort of unattainable to most of us. But if we can keep it in a, the back of our minds that we're striving to be positive five times more than negative, that's as simple as it is. And what the research, you did bring up the research. The research has shown that the closer you get to a five to one ratio, the more incredible the changes in performance are of your athletes. That's why they call it magic, because when they're at a two to one, eh, it's good. When they're at a three to one, it's good. When they get closer to that five to one, they notice behavior changes in their athletes immediately. Kids that were unable to take criticism and feedback are all of a sudden good listeners. Kids that right. weren't coachable are all of a sudden coachable. So, I mean, the environment even in education, they say is now thriving, not just sustaining, it's thriving. So mm -hmm. that's where I like to bring in the research point of it, that it's not just, yeah, five to one is good. It's that five to one actually, when you get closer to five positives to one critique or criticism, it actually changes the behavior in a magical way. <laughs> and all the mm -hmm. different research, and you don't have to go into this much detail, I'm just telling you for you, all the research that backs that, the research in marriages and in classrooms and on the athletic field, the ratio has been the same. It's, it's been five to one. They even found that couples in couples therapy, if it was a two to one, two positives to a negative, that's that's the ratio of divorced couples, couples that are heading for divorce. They still have yeah. more positives than negatives, but it's I mean, it's it's just surprising to me. So again, you don't have to go in all that detail, but I think it just helps to kind of understand where the magic word came from. That magical things yeah, have happened with the athletes. So I other than that, I think you did a great job. I think I'm I'm excited to to see you do more. And uh I think you've got a good handle of the concepts. As I said, my, my biggest uh, my biggest critique is just to you know keep the keep the pace going and uh, and keep the crowd involved. So I think you're you're on your way. You're doing a great job. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. 
All right, I guess I'm the only one set. Now, in the other ones, when you have more than one, will everybody be able to watch everybody else? I mean, yep. that kind of thing? Yeah, and you can yeah. jump in. You can jump in on any of them that you want to. What I'm going to do on that spreadsheet, I'm going to put the yeah. link. So if it's like right before the person goes, like yours today, I put this Google Hangout link so they could join it. Right. But then I'm also, like after this, I'm going to have your link so somebody can watch it if they want to. So at Good. any time, if you want to jump in on somebody else's, you know, feel free to do that. Okay, I may, I may do that uh, on the link on Thursday or something like that when I have time. Yeah, I always say the more the merrier. <laughs> well, it does help, you know, especially when you're asking questions and knowing you only have two respondents and you're, you 